Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Primary Junior French as a Second Language Program Track presentation. Um, I think from here on in, I'm going to refer to it as PJFSL because it's a lot faster. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. My name is Alex Amodio. I'm the Manager of Student Services here at the Faculty of Education at Queens. Also on the call here, we have Edith Bovey and Judy Elvich Skinner. They are instructors in the PJFSL program track, and they're going to be sharing a lot of information with you today. Um, to get started, I just want a disclaimer that when Edie and Judy are speaking, um, they will speak in French because that's the language of instruction for your PJFSL courses. I do not speak French, so um, if they explain something and then later on in my part of the presentation I also explain it, I'm sorry, I didn't know, um, but it's good for you to have the information twice. <laughs> um, we're going to hold all of our questions until the end. I will keep my eye on the chat just in case something comes up if you feel like it can't wait, but otherwise we would love for it to um, Sorry, I'm going to enable the live transcription. Thank you for requesting it. Um, I'm not sure how the transcription is with the French, but we're going to do our best here today. Um, all right, so I guess I'll get started. Edie, if you don't mind advancing to the next slide. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I'm going to start today with a land acknowledgement, and we want to take this opportunity to recognize that Queen's University is situated on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee people. We are grateful to be able to live, learn, work, and play on these lands. And as future educators, we hope that you will also begin to continue to make space for this thought and include it within your teaching practice. Next slide, please. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to start with some general information about the program. I know that some of you here today are going to be applying for this program track through the consecutive education program and others maybe here in the room are applying as part of the, um, sorry, did I say, con yes, consecutive, or some of you are also already at Queen's as part of the concurrent education program. So welcome to you, Con Eddies. Um, both of you will need to be applying to this program track directly, and we'll get into the, how that works toward the end of the presentation. I'm going to give you some basic information, mostly about um, mostly as it applies to the consecutive education program. Um, and then Edie and Judy will take over and talk more specifically about primary junior French as a second language, what those courses look like. And then I'll come back with some more general information about our program here at Queens. So why Queens is probably a big question for all of you applying for consecutive. We set you up for excellence throughout our four semester program. So our program is quick. If you've been looking into it, you will notice that we start in May and do four consecutive terms back to back, which gets you out into the job market faster. So we start, we have to do your summer term, you do fall, winter, and then the next summer term. And then that September, you're out working in, like you're OCT certified and out working in a school if that's what you want to do. And I think many of you do as PJFSL interest people. Um, as you know, there's high demand for teachers right now, especially within French. So you're getting in at a really great time. And by doing our program, we'll get you out there as soon as possible. The primary junior French as a second language program track um, prepares you to teach in French immersion, extended and core French programs in Ontario schools. And as mentioned, this is open to primary junior teacher candidates only. So that is for um, teaching in junior kindergarten through grade six. During the program, it's going to be a mix of time spent in the classroom learning and then time spent on your practicum placement, which I guess is also in a classroom. Um, you'll do 21 weeks of placements during your time in our program, and at least three of these weeks will be completed in French. And three of your weeks will be done um, doing an alternative practicum, which can be done in a school setting anywhere in the world, as long as it's related to French. So I'm sure Edie and Judy will talk a little bit more about how the Alt-Prac works and, and how you'll make that work for your interests when you're in the program. Okay, that's the, that's the very short um, version of our program um, in general. If you have any other questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them at the end. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues here um, to speak to you a little bit more specifically about PJFSL. Oops, I went too fast. Oh, there I am. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Bonjour. 
Uh, my name's Edie Bovey, and you see Judy Elvin Skinner there. We're both FOSI instructors for the primary junior FSL program track. So we're gonna tell you, talk to you a little bit about the course. And during that time, we will be speaking in French. If you have any questions today, as Alex said, um, we're gonna take those at the end of the presentation and you are welcome to ask the questions in French or English. Please note that this program track includes two courses that are entirely in French. So that is the EDST, where you learn about theoretical approaches, and then the FOSI, where you uh, learn about the practical applications. So in those two classes, all classroom communication is in French, uh, communication with us, communication amongst yourselves, all the readings, all the assignments, everything will be done in French. Et voici pourquoi. En Ontario, uh, selon le ministère de l'Éducation, le français doit être la langue de toute communication dans la salle de classe français la langue seconde que ce soit en immersion, que ce soit en français de base, que ce soit en français intensif, de la maternelle jusqu'à jusqu la deuxième année, nous, euh, il faut que cette communication soit toute en français. D'ailleurs, pour ce programme, nous vous suggérons euh, d'avoir un niveau B2 de communication euh, en français, mais surtout, nous, nous voulons que vous soyez ouverts à être des apprenants à vie du français. Alors, euh, notre contribution à cette présentation a deux parties. Moi, je vais parler des thèmes proéminents de notre cours, euh, pour ça, en, en enseignant en immersion, et Julie parlera des traits uniques de ce programme. Alors, euh, le, le thème peut-être euh, le plus important, c'est justement, c'est euh, le curriculum, ou ce qu'on appelle le programme cadre. Le programme cadre, c'est le fondement, euh, la fondation de notre cours, mais aussi de vos classes futures de français langue seconde. Alors, vous allez être euh, très familiarisé avec ce document du curriculum, puisqu'on s'en sert tout au long du cours pour nos activités d'apprentissage. De plus, l'enseignement du français est en train de se transformer en Ontario. Euh, pour le mieux, d'ailleurs, et euh, nous allons partager toutes sortes de ressources qui viennent du ministère qui va vous aider à appuyer cette transformation dans votre euh, salle de classe. Euh, parlant de transformation, une des transformations les plus importantes, c'est l'approche actionnelle, et c'est ça qui est préconisé en Ontario. L'approche actionnelle euh, offre aux élèves une raison authentique pour parler en français. Alors, on veut aligner la communication avec les, les situations dans la vraie vie. Par exemple, préparer un repas acadien, ce que euh, les élèves dans l'image font. Suivre une recette euh, est très authentique et c'est très amusant pour les apprenants. Troisième thème, c'est comment les quatre habiletés de communication sont interliées. Tout de même, nous savons, comme enseignants de langue, que l'écoute et euh, l'expression orale viennent avant la lecture, pardon, je ferme ça, que, euh, que euh, l'expression orale et l'écoute viennent avant la lecture et l'écriture. Pareil comme quand vous avez appris votre langue maternelle. Vous avez entendu la langue avant de parler et vous avez parlé avant de lire ou écrire. Toutes ces habiletés euh, sont interliées, sont reliées et vos futurs, vont profiter de, euh, vos futurs élèves pardon, euh, vont profiter de toutes sortes d'activités euh, d'écoute et d'expression orale avant de lire et écrire. Ça ne veut pas dire que nous n'allons pas explorer la lecture ou l'écriture. Euh, nous partagerons des livres en français qui sont nos coups de cœur. Euh, nous partagerons des stratégies d'enseignement de la lecture. Nous vous ferons découvrir des ressources disponibles à la bibliothèque euh, de, de faculté d'éducation. 
Quant à l'écriture, nous l'étudierons grâce à des cahiers de correspondance avec une classe d'immersion. Vous serez jumelé avec un ami, euh, un ami pardon, à, à l'alimentaire et vous échangerez des messages écrits chaque semaine. C'est vraiment un moment joyeux dans notre classe, n'est-ce pas? Judy, quand on sort les cahiers de communication, tout le monde est toujours très enthousiaste de voir ce que son, son petit copain a écrit. Et en même temps, nous étudions l'écriture grâce, grâce au progrès que votre euh, petit copain fera dans son cahier de communication. Un autre thème important dans notre cours, c'est comment appuyer les apprenants ayant des besoins particuliers en français langue seconde. Um, nous savons par des études que tout le monde peut apprendre le français. Uh, tous les apprenants sont capables et nous explorons des ressources et des pratiques pour soutenir les apprenants du français langue seconde comme uh, ce document du ministère uh, nous, uh, nous dit, les programmes de français langue seconde s'adressent à tous les élèves. Finalement, uh, l'autre thème important, c'est la culture. La culture et, les langues, et la langue sont inséparables. Nous, a, nous examinerons comment faire découvrir les différentes communautés francophones dans le monde et aussi comment faire valoir toutes les cultures qui existent parmi vos élèves dans votre salle de classe et votre école. Alors maintenant, je passe la parole à Judy qui parlera des traits uniques du programme. Merci, Edith. Tous mes, tous mes points sont sur un diapo, alors ça va être long, mais restez avec moi, priez. Apprendre des pratiques exemplaires en enseignement. J'imagine quand vous avez étudié le, le français, vous avez fait beaucoup de feuilles de verbes. Vous avez conjugué, conjugué les verbes de long de la journée. Et maintenant, on sait qu'il y a d'autres stratégies qui valent mieux. Alors, Idi et moi, on essaie de rester au courant avec les recherches courantes pour qu'on puisse vous donner des uh, pratiques exemplaires que vous pouvez utiliser durant vos stages et durant vos futurs, dans vos futures salles de classe. Il y a dit qu'on va travailler beaucoup l'approche actionnelle et on sait, que, on sait que vous allez apprendre comment évaluer vos élèves et développer un plan d'action pour chaque élève, appuyer um, ce que vous apprenez dans, dans nos cours, dans vos stages et dans vos salles de classe. Et comme il y a dit, les tâches actionnelles sont basées sur la langue orale et qui ils seront au centre de notre programme. Souvent, les élèves qui finissent des programmes d'immersion disent qu'ils sont capables de lire et d'écrire en français, mais ils n'ont pas assez de confiance de parler. Alors, on va explorer comment développer la confiance de nos élèves par des tâches actionnelles, par les interaction authentique entre élèves, entre nous et nos élèves et, et avec le public aussi. Nous allons aussi penser à comment on peut évaluer nos compétences de communication en français. Je suis apprenant de langue, français langue seconde, alors je vais continuer à apprendre le français durant toute ma vie. Et on va vous aider à établir, établir les buts ou les objectifs pour améliorer votre français durant l'année scolaire. Alors, comment est-ce que vous pouvez instiguer les uh, interactions orales avec d'autres personnes pour continuer à parler? Et il y a dit qu'on va découvrir les, les ressources à la bibliothèque de Queen, notre bibliothécaire Brenda Reed et tout en équipe avec nous. Elle a acheté énormément de livres en français cette année et elle continue d'en acheter. Et elle m'a dit la, cette semaine qu que la nouvelle bibliothécaire qui va travailler avec elle est francophone. Alors, quel, quel cadeau pour nous. Le, la collection est petite, mais il grandit et nous allons explorer comment on 
pourquoi ut bien utiliser toutes ces ressources dans nos salles de classe. Et quand vous partez en stage, vous êtes libre de prendre les livres de la bibliothèque de Queens pour, pour vos stages. Et Idi et moi, nous sommes fiers de la communauté entre nos élèves et entre nous et nos élèves. Et on essaie d'établir un climat d'apprentissage amical où tout le monde peut prendre des risques parce que parler en français devant le monde, um, ce n'est pas facile. Alors, on va essayer d'établir un climat où nos élèves sont confortables avec nous et entre eux. Et les élèves, je sais qu'on a plusieurs élèves de l'année passée qui sont voyagés ensemble pour enseigner cette année parce qu'ils ont établi une amitié entre eux. Alors, j'espère que vous allez faire partie de notre communauté francophone et francophile et que vous allez ouvrir, euh, ouvrir vos cœurs à apprendre comment enseigner le français aux autres. Et c'est tout ce que j'ai à dire. Merci. So, we're going to go back to Alex now. And again, um, uh, we we'll look forward to your questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get started. So when you're here, what does practicum look like? So when you start um, your first practicum, um, you're going to be doing in May. So you get here and you have three days in the building. This is for the consecutive education students, by the way. So if you're a con ed watching this presentation, you start in September, but I'm going to speak to the consecs right now. Um, if you're applying for the consecutive PJFSL program track, you arrive in May, you have three days here on campus, and then you're going to be placed in a Kingston based board for your first practicum. So that means the Kingston area the the boards that that are local to Kingston span quite a bit of distance so it's important for you to realize that that doesn't mean you'll be walking distance from Duncan MacArthur Hall where we are here at Queens to where you're doing your practicum placement you could be anywhere up to an hour out of Kingston um, so in terms of your whole practicum while you're here um, if actually Edie if you don't mind advancing to the next slide I can see Thank you. Um, when you apply here, you're going to be sent a, or sorry, when you're accepted into the program not long after, you'll receive a survey from our practicum office where you're going to choose four school boards from our designated catchment area um, that you could be placed in for your practicum placements. So you're going to choose the top four boards and you can be placed in any of those four boards. You might get your first choice, you might get your fourth choice. So think carefully about what areas you are willing to go to um, for your practicum placements. Um, as I said, teacher candidates could be placed up to an hour from their home address. So we do our best to place you close to where you live. Um, but please keep in mind that it's, it's not very easy to, to, we have a lot of students and there are lots of people um, who need these placements. And there are only so many teachers in so many classrooms and so many schools who are able to accept our associate students into their classrooms. So you could be placed up to an hour from your home address. We liken this to when you start out in your education career. Um, if you get on, many of you will start on an OT list. You're gonna be called in the morning for to go to a school within the board that you've said you're available available to OT for and that class could be you know a half hour an hour away from where you live and you just you take what you can get when you're at the be beginning of your career and you're beginning teachers when you enter our program you are professionals so it's a very similar experience um, so for the the first practicum as I said is in the Kingston area or, or from a Kingston based board um, but for the rest of your practicum placements you'll be placed in in the different boards that you've indicated you are willing to go to so a large percentage of our placements actually happen outside of the kingston based board areas um, and all of the board information will be available to you um, when you get into the program and i believe there's some on our website as well 
All right, next slide, please. Just making sure we're at the right place. Perfect. Um, so Duncan MacArthur Hall in Kingston. I'm just going to talk a little bit generally about what it's like here at Queen's. Um, we are housed at the Faculty of Education. We're housed in Duncan MacArthur Hall. Um, so everything for the Faculty of Education is here. All of your classes will be here. Um, I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think I heard Judy talking about our library um, and how it just had a renovation. Did I did I pick that up? I heard Bibliotech, yeah? <laughs> so some of that grade nine French is still paying off. Um, so we have here um, at Queens and in Duncan MacArthur Hall, we have a wide range of teaching facilities, support and counseling services, administrative offices, and a prayer room. We have dedicated art spaces, including a large drama studio, a music room, visual arts classroom. Many of you, or all of you who would be applying to this program track would be in our primary junior division, um, and you'll be doing drama, music, and visual arts as part of your program. And so we have classrooms that are actually specialized um, for, for that curriculum. Um, one of the most prominent features of West Campus, as Judy said, is the education library. It's open year-round. It has books, teaching age, aids, journals in paper format, and online. We have a uh, wonderful librarian, who, wonderful librarians who will help you with anything that you need. We also have an Indigenous Teacher Education Lounge and Library in a sacred medicine garden. And Duncan MacArthur Hall is surrounded by green space, space and gardens, as well as outdoor spaces, um, including our new outdoor classrooms. Um, we are a literal three-minute walk from Lake Ontario. So if you need, to, if you like to get out and enjoy a little bit of nature on your breaks between classes, I know I personally go for walks along the water quite often. It is beautiful. Um, Kingston, just in general, is a lovely city. Um, I'm a little biased. I'm from here. I think Kingston's wonderful. Um, as it says on the slide here, we're located right between Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and the U.S. Um, and it's a it's a beautiful city. There's lots to do here, um, and there's lots to experience. Next slide, please, Edie. Thank you. When it comes to housing, uh, many of our students, there, there are a range of housing opportunities um, because you, as a student in our program, you're on class blocks where you have like a chunk of time where you're in class, you're at Duncan MacArthur Hall and a chunk of time where you're on a practicum placement. And some of your practicum placements won't be in Kingston. So having a long-term place to stay here might not make sense for you. So our students do, do various things. Some find long-term Airbnbs, um, but there are also lots of supports and options here for housing if you'd like to live in residence or within the student community. Some of those are outlined on this slide um, and all that information can also be found on our website. Next slide, please. I'm just making sure, sorry, I only have one screen on me today and I, I'm worried that I'm, our, our screens aren't matching up, but it looks like we're right. So if it all sounds good and you'd like to apply to our program, this goes for both of you in um, consecutive and con ed. You have to apply through the UACT's webpage. This is the same website that you used to apply to university back when you were applying for your undergraduate degree. We have a specific portal for teaching applications. It's called TEAS, makes sense, uh, which you'll see in the blue square on the slide there. Applications are now open and they remain open until December 1st. Remember, you can only you can apply up to three programs here at Queen's. So if you wanted to do PJFSL as your first choice, you can apply to that. You could apply to just a consecutive PJ program or you could apply to if you were interested in one of our other other program tracks, you could apply to the OEE PJ program track as well. So outdoor and experiential education, if that was something you were interested in. Um, you're assessed with how you rank in your choices. So keep in mind how you rank your choices. If PJFSL is where you want to, want to be, make sure that that is ranked as number one because you will only be offered one offer of admission. So if you've applied to PJFSL, OEE, and the consecutive PJ stream, you're only going to get one offer for all three of those. So make sure that you've ranked them accordingly so you'll get the offer to the one that you want best. Um, uh, other than that, you will also have to complete a personal statement of experience, which is due on December 10th, as well as send in any of the supplementary documents that you need for the program. The personal statement of experience is basically an essay that you will write outlining the experiences that you've had and how you think that they will aid you in your um, educational career moving forward. 
in mid-February, we send out our first round of offer, offers and the acceptance deadline is two weeks later on March 1st. So not a huge turnaround time, but I think um, it should be an easy choice to make because obviously if you're offered a spot in our program, I like to think you'd like to take it. Um, we do have an agreement with other faculties of education in Ontario that they will send their offers by March 1st. So by March 1st, you would know what all of your options are um, and you would be able to make an informed choice. You won't have to make that decision. You know, I, you've been waiting to hear from a different university um, but Queen's has the deadline of March 1st. That's okay. You should have enough time to see all the offers on the table in, in time for our deadline on March 1st. Um, also, we run webinars. So if you are offered a space in the program, we will have more webinars offered between February 15th, when ideally our, our offers are sent out in March 1st, the deadline to accept the offer that can help you make your decision as well and get into some more of those, those details. Um, next slide, please, Edie. We're on the same page. Perfect. So here you'll see the requirements to take part in the program. This is specific to the PJFSL program track. Um, so you need to have meet one of these requirements in order to be a part of the PJFSL program track. So you can see them outlined here. They're all outlined as well on, on our how to apply page for the PJFSL um, page on our PJFSL how to apply website. Um, You'll have to meet one of these, um, and then you submit this using our supplementary documents form that's found on that same web page. Um, I can probably slide it in the chat when I'm done talking here so that you can see where you need to go. Um, so make sure you have one of these. Next slide, please. Um, here are some general um, guidelines for what we what we're recommended to have. Now we can never speak to how competitive the pool of applicants is going to be on a given year. Many times um, these these requirements go up and up. So if we have a lot of really high level applicants, that's going to raise the bar. But we usually recommend that you have a minimum of a B average um, as a cumulative GPA a four years honors undergraduate degree or a three year degree and 120 units and one half year course in developmental psychology or one full year course in introductory um, psychology is also a huge asset in terms of making your application more competitive. Next slide, please. Um, and then these are specific to primary and junior. So if you're applying to primary junior French as second language or just the primary junior um, consecutive intake, you're recommended to have one half year university course in each of these areas. So English, math, science, the arts, and you can see them outlined there, geography or Canadian history and health or physical education. Um, these are just generally the kinds of courses you're going to be teaching as a PJ teacher in a classroom. And these are the curriculum courses you will be taking as part of the program. By having these sorts of courses in your undergraduate degree, it just helps better prepare you. Um, so applicants who have all of these courses on their um, transcript are going to be a little bit more competitive um, than those who don't. Next slide, please. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Oops. Okay, next one, please. Perfect. Um, so I spoke about the supplemental documents there and sorry, I'm just catching up here. Um, and what you need to, to submit to us in order to make sure we have everything. Once you've submitted your UACT's application, you'll receive an email from Queen's um, probably within the next three to five business days. So I give it up to a week with your next steps. It will give you all the information you need about the supplemental documents. And it'll also start giving you access to your Queen's portal, which is called Solus, that will list the remaining documents to submit. So we'll keep your checklist and Solus up to date. We update them about once a week. So you can see, okay, yes, I've sent my transcript. Yes, I've sent my supplemental documents and yes I've submitted my personal statement of experience. So the one document that's required for every, every application to Queen's is that personal statement of experience. It's the document we usually get the most questions about. It has two questions in it and it allows you to tell us what you've learned from your experiences that will help you as a future educator which I think I mentioned earlier. There's no right or wrong answer with this document but we encourage you to spend some time on it because it is weighted quite heavily with your application. So we do look at your 
your grades, but then we also look at this PSE, and the more convincing you can be in the PSE, the stronger your application is going to be. We encourage you in your PSE to highlight your qualities, capabilities, and experience you're bringing into the program, and focus most, if you can, on the impact that these experiences have had on you, and why will these experiences make you a good teacher? Because for most of us, that's why we're coming into the BEd program. Um, next slide, please. Perfect, thank you. Um, so check out our website. It has so much information, more than we could ever cover in one of these webinars um, and lots of information that you're gonna find helpful as you get closer to the application deadline. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to email us. Our general inbox is the EDUC student services at queensu.ca. Um, there are many of us on the other end of that inbox and we're happy to answer your questions, especially if you have something more specific. Um, we can, we can get into that with you via email. And then if there are any questions about TEAS and the application process and your application within TEAS, you should reach out to UAC, the Ontario University's Application Centre directly, as they're the they're, they are the experts on that. I don't know what happens on their end. I only know what happens on my end, so I'm not going to be very helpful um, with anything you're, you're doing through TEAS and UAC, but um, so you're going to want to reach out to them but I'll help you with any other questions you have about the program. So Edie, if you wanted to go to our last slide. Oh, questions. <laughs> this is your opportunity to ask us questions. We're going to hand it over to you. You can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand and we can get to you whatever works best. You could probably even just unmute and ask if you wanted to as well. There aren't too many of us here, about 15. So. Alex, can I just add that um, I had the question before, the personal statement of experience is written in English because it, um, the people who review them, there are not enough Francophone people to review all of them. So that will be in English. Yes, that is. Thank you so much, Judy, for clarifying that. That's a, a good spot. To Okay, I'm just going to read these out loud. So for the supplementary documentation, is it informal where I simply submit a Word document where I list all my French classes? Is it okay if one of my classes is still in progress? So what we will do with that is we'll, we'll have a copy of your transcript if you're, if you're talking about the courses you've taken in your undergraduate degree. Um, we'll have your transcript from your undergraduate degree. So we will check that transcript that we're using to assess the rest of the um, of your courses um, to confirm that you've taken the proper amount of French classes. If one of your French classes is in progress, you're taking something over the winter term, that's totally fine. It will be listed on your transcript as in progress and we will count it toward what you need. The same with any of those other courses that I listed where the, we recommend the English and the geography or Canadian history. If, the, if one of those classes are one you're taking in winter term, we will see that and we will count it if, as long as it's in progress. Um, what we will need you to do is successfully complete that course in order to, for so you will likely get a conditional offer of acceptance into the program if that's the case, and then you'll need to successfully complete that course um, in order to to formalize that offer. Could you please explain a little bit more about the application process for concurrent education students? Yeah, Leah, if you um, you still have to apply, I believe you still have to apply through TEAS. I haven't. Um, I'm not like 100% on this. I jumped into this, this presentation. I've never done one of these um, kind of last minute. Um, so if you wanted to send us an email, we can go through that with you. I believe it should. I think you do have to apply on T's as well um, and make sure that we get your um, your supplementary documents. Um, you're automatically obviously in your final year into your BEd year, but in terms of getting into the program track, we're going to need your supplementary documents and, and you may need to go through T's, but I'm not 100% on that. I'm really sorry. Um, you can send us an email and we'll just confirm, okay? Um, and then Jessica has a question. I want to teach in a full French school. Would this be the right program for me? Um, Edie and Judy, do you have insight into that? Hmm. Go ahead, Edie. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so um, we work with uh, English school boards, and the curriculum that uh, we base our program on 
is the uh, curriculum um, for uh, English school boards um, and, and teaching French as a second language. Um, other than that, all the other courses you would be teaching um, in, in a French school anyway, like Les Sciences, Les Arts, um, but you need to know that those courses are gonna be delivered to you in English. Um, I have, uh, we currently have students who went through the French um, school system, are planning to do their alt prac in the French school system and will probably go to the French uh, uh, system. Um, there certainly is just as uh, a need for those teachers as um, in that uh, teaching situation as in the English school boards as well. I, I um, Go ahead, Judy. Can I jump in, Judy? Our, yeah. our courses, our program track courses are French second language courses. So it is our, our mission to um, teach students how to teach French as an additional language, not how to, um, how to teach French as a first language. And the other thing you would need to know, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the person who asked that, or I'd say your name here. Um, you would need to know that your practicum placements would not be in French first language boards. They would be in English school boards. Your alternative practicum, your three week alternative, um, could probably be doing something in a French first language board, but your, um, your practicum that are happening through Queen's would be in English language school boards. So I think the bottom line is, if you are thinking that you want to teach French first language, that this might not be the best fit. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you for answering that, Judy. Um, Laura, I just have your message here about the, I'm sorry, our process has changed slightly this year and I, um, I completely forgot. You do need to list the courses, um, the French courses you've taken in, during your undergraduate degree, just in a Word document is fine for that supplementary document. And then we will have a copy of your transcript because you would have submitted that to, for entrance into the program. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure that what you've said you took um, aligns with your transcript we'll do that on our end and make sure it's all good so um yeah sorry i forgot about that that new piece to the the sub docs um looks like jessica has a follow-up question which program which program should they do instead can you speak to to french education programs or what's available in ontario university uh, d'ottawa j'imagine mm -hmm. mais je ne sais pas il va falloir que que vous faites la recherche vous-même, Jessica, parce que je, on n'est pas expert. Are there any other questions? Alex, someone, someone has asked about how many students do you plan to accept this year? Oh, um, so we don't we don't have like a quota to fill. We don't go in with a, this is how many we want and this is how many we will get. It really does depend on the pool of applicants, how many qualified applicants we get. And then there are lots of other pieces that go into making that. So I really can't speak to any exact numbers. It's not information that, that we give out because there are so many moving pieces. But um, Alex, could I say that yeah. um, for the POCI and EDST that um, our classes would be 40 or under, and if they were if they were greater size than that, they would create a, a second group, I think. I, I can't say that they would for sure <laughs> approve a second, a yeah. second, but I mean, that's, yes, you could, that is very fair to say. They, they um, would, the maximum would be around 40 students in, in our class, and this year we have 25 in our class which is a, a lovely number for establishing a community of learners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Laura, uh, oui, il y a deux cours qui sont en français et les autres sont en anglais. Did you answer that just in French? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, PJFSL multi-session. Multi um, Edie, do you want to speak to that? Edie is the coordinator for the PJFSL multi-session. So you got the right person here. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, 
Is that it? Could you please clarify if students can complete their practicum in other school boards uh, in the Kingston area? Uh, yes. So um, the PJ FSL multi-session um, applicants are supported by the school board um, um, that they're in because of, of um, well, for example, because it happens um, on weekends, um, candidates do not teach on the Friday and they come to Kingston for their classes. And the school board recommends uh, our candidates because they're gonna support your, um, your um, supply time during the time that you're in class. Um, we have 21 uh, candidates uh, who are right now in the PGFSL multi-session and every single one of those candidates started teaching September 6th. Is that the first day of teaching? Yes. With the school board that uh, recommended them for the program. So um, it, it's the school board where you're currently working uh, perhaps as an unqualified uh, educator or perhaps an EA or an ECE that's the school board where you would be um, doing your practicum uh, equivalent dates. I hope that answers your question, MZ. One more thing to add around the schedule, um, because the schedule is a four semester in a row schedule, it's really important that you check that year calendar before you accept into the program. Um, this year we started the week before Labor Day, our, our fall term, and that caught caught a few people by surprise. They were, they were still working in the summer. They didn't expect to be here. And our classes, because we only, we only have you for five weeks or six week blocks before you go out on practicum, all our classes are mandatory and attendance is mandatory um, in them in order for you to get the most out of them. So it's really important that you know what the schedule is before you um, make arrangements for travel or when you make arrangements for when you're going to come. Yeah, thanks, Alex, for that information about the, the, the webinar. And yes, we had a student who didn't check the schedule and plan her own wedding. Uh, before, while she was supposed to be in class. So yeah, please make sure that you know when classes start, it's the week before um, um, uh, Labor Day. Yeah, and we actually just had all of our dates approved for the 2023-24 school year, and they are all posted on our website as well under any of our how to apply pages. I think there's a 23, 24 academic dates or something link. And you can just click on that and see what the dates are for the upcoming upcoming year. Um, because it does start really fast and we we go hard. <laughs> uh, well, we know where our practicum is located before school starts so we can organize housing. Um, not necessarily um, practicum placements because we you start your practicum placement at the beginning of October that really only gives schools a month if you if you think about the school year most administrators aren't working or even thinking about practicum students until mid like beginning to mid September. Um, so we don't receive a lot of the confirmations on practicum placements until that time. So it's hard um, to say where you're going to be placed. Um, too early in your in your time with us, unfortunately. Um, I'm so I know that's a challenge for housing, um, but it's just the the reality of dealing with schools in real time. Uh, there's a follow up here for PJ multi session. One more question to candidates do their can candidates do their practicum in Toronto school boards, for example. Um, so yes, yes, <laughs> they are but, within our area, but not French language school boards. Yes. Um, Sylvia has one. Apply for permanent residence. Exemption. Yeah, Sylvia, I think I'm not I'm not certain what what the stipulations are for Queens in terms of international student versus domestic student. So if you wanted to follow up again with that Educ student services email address with a little more information, we can probably look into that a little bit more for you. I don't know um, off the top of my head what the 
what the stipulations are. Um, that's okay, Leah, the PJFSL multi-session is just a different way that we run the program. So there are two ways of doing PJFSL here at the Queen's Faculty of Education. One is through this program track, which is the, as we've said, the 16 month consecutive program. You take um, your, your PJFSL classes as part of that. Another is through the PJFSL multi-session program, um, which is done a little bit differently. Edie um, can speak to it probably a little bit better than I can. Um, but it's, is it two years, Edie? Yes. Yeah, yes. two years. And it's done um, once, you just say it. You, you okay. have your spiel. You know, you know what to say. So yes, it is um, over two years. And your classes for the uh, uh, multi-session happen in June, sorry, in July, the, uh, basically three and a half weeks in July, both summers. And then you would come to Kingston once a month um, to have um, um, an intense weekends of classes. Um, instead of practicum, the, um, the multi-session um, people are actually um, able to uh, instruct in uh, French classrooms. So those days um, you wouldn't be in practicum you would be actually teaching your class and um, they would count as your practicum days. Um, that's, that's sort of like the, the overall um, um, summary of the program. And again, it's, it is for um, particularly for people who have, um, have a bachelor of or sorry, have a bachelor's degree and are interested in teaching FSL and, are uh, affiliated with the school board already that can support your um, entry into the program as they will be um, uh, releasing you for um, um, every month for one day to come to Kingston uh, to start those intensive weekends. Um, it's, it's heavy duty because you are a full-time student and you're working full-time. Um, so um, it, it's, um, it's a lot, of, it's, it's intensive, but it is also um, an interesting way of um, doing the uh, PJFSL while you are also uh, working. So please come to the webinar on November 8th and it will be much clearer, I hope. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Pretty inspired. I'm going to give you another 30 seconds or so, type something in or unmute. Um, as I've already said, we are just because this webinar is over doesn't mean you've lost access to us. You can still contact our office at any time to ask any questions you have. Our website is a wealth of information. Um, most of what you need can be found there, but if there's anything specific, I'm just typing it in to the chat again right now. It's EDUC student services at queensu.ca. Um, you can send us any and all questions you have. Um, not seeing any more questions. So I wish everyone all the best as you make your decisions for where you will be applying and which programs you're going to be applying to. I'm sure it's a lot of work in and of itself just to decide where to apply, let alone pulling together those applications and supplementary documents and writing PSEs and then getting accepted into programs and doing the real work. So um, all the very best to you as you start this journey. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with all of us. Thank you, Edie and Judy, for coming out today to share more about PJFSL. We really appreciate it. And um, I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Thanks.